Good morning, Four Oaks Baptist Church. Welcome to our Sunday morning service, either this morning or whenever you're watching this. I'm Sam. And I'm Beth. It's lovely to have you all with us uh, in this virtual capacity this morning. Um, we're going to start our service this morning in a way that has become really, really important to the way we do worship at Four Oaks Baptist Church. And that's just with a moment of silence. Just taking that time to choose to focus our eyes on God and put everything from our week to one side um, and just focus and worship the Lord. So a moment of silence. Lord, we come to you this morning and we just want to start by saying thank you. Thank you for all the fantastic things that you bring to our life. Thank you for all the joy that you bring. And Lord, this morning we just want to ask you to bring us wisdom in these really difficult times when it can sometimes feel very confusing to know what the right thing to do is. Lord, we just trust in you and we're gonna choose to focus our eyes and our hearts on you. Lord, we pray this morning for the injustices that we continue to see in the news. And we just pray that you would bring people to know your love and to know your kindness and to know your heart. And Lord, we wanna pray for the service that we're about to hear. We wanna pray that we would open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears um, to your word and that every day we would take steps to choose to follow, um, to follow you. Amen. Amen. We're going to move into a time of sung worship now. Please feel free to join in at home or wherever you're watching. It's a really good one this week. I think you're <laughs> going to enjoy it.
to do what we do, Lord, that we wouldn't attempt to do things in our own strength, our own might, our own power, our own wisdom, but Lord, that we would rest wholeheartedly in you. And so, Lord, we just ask as we sing this morning, God, that you would enter this room that we're in right now, Lord, and that you would speak to our hearts. And Lord, that you would fill us afresh this morning, Lord, we're here to seek you. In the secret, in the quiet place In the stillness you are there In the secret, in the quiet hour I wait Only for you, cause I want to know you more Lord, and I want to touch 
just make this our prayer. to 
speak to our hearts, to silence the storms, to bring your peace. And Lord, as we've been singing, come Holy Spirit, come Lord Jesus. Lord, that's our prayer. Into our households, into our lives. We say, come Lord Jesus. children's section of our service so gather around your young people grab your glue sticks your glitter and whatever other craft essentials you've got hello my name is holly and this as most of you already know is jack <laughs> it's me i'm jack <laughs> what are we doing wow we're just about to read a story oh i love stories okay then let's get started this is called a special dinner guest. Jesus spent a lot of time walking round from town to town teaching people about God and how they should treat each other. When Martha heard that Jesus was going to be walking through the town of Bethany, she was filled with excitement. She loved Jesus so much and hoped she would be able to spend time with him. She put on her best clothes and ran out of the house to meet Jesus. Please, please come to our house, she asked. I would love to prepare a nice dinner for you. Jesus agreed to go to Martha's house for dinner. Martha was filled with joy. She turned and ran back to the house to prepare for her special guest. Mary, Mary, she cried out. Jesus is coming. Mary, was Martha's sister, was as excited as Martha. She also loved Jesus very much. I wonder what they're going to have for dinner. <laughs> McDonald's! <laughs> I'm not sure it would have been McDonald's, Jack. <laughs> so, quickly, they both began to tidy up. Martha was becoming worried. There's just so much to do. How will we manage to get everything done before Jesus arrives? She was really busy. She was dusting, straightening up the room. Then she went to the kitchen to prepare a meal. While she was working in the kitchen, she heard voices outside. It's Jesus, she said excitedly. I must welcome him. Wow! She welcomed Jesus in with Mary and went back to the kitchen. The table was set and Ma Martha made a wonderful meal. Martha was so busy that she didn't have time to spend with Jesus. She was doing all of the work and Mary, her sister, was just there sat listening to Jesus. The more she worked, the more upset she became and eventually she asked Jesus, Jesus, could you please ask Mary to come into the kitchen? I could surely do with some help. Need some help? What kind of help does she need? Well, Jack, Martha has been doing everything, hasn't she? So she must be feeling tired by now. Anyway, Jesus turned to her lovingly and spoke her name, Martha. You are so busy making everything just right and worrying way too much. You don't have to do so much. Look, Mary is sitting here calmly listening to me and that is really important. She has chosen the better thing. The better thing? What's that mean? Well, Jack, Martha realised that being still and spending time with Jesus is just as important as doing lots of things for Jesus. See, Jesus loves us for us, not what we do for him. And he just loves to spend time with us. I don't understand. Jack, Jack. Oh, there's Andy. I'm coming! Why don't we go and see what Andy has to say? Okay, let's go. Jack, Jack, come over here. Come on, come, come here. Okay, okay. Okay, never mind. Jack, I was just talking to Grandad while you were having your story. I was having a story with, with Holly. Yes, I know. And I was talking to Grandad, and Grandad is a little bit sad. <gasps> Why? Well, he says 
that you've been really busy with something. <laughs> My new computer game, it's amazing, it's really good, you get to play. Yeah, yeah, I know you've got a new computer game, but Grandad is very sad. <gasps> Because he wants a computer game. No, not because he wants a computer game. But you have spent so much time on this computer game. You're not doing the things that you normally would do. Like what? Well, when you're sitting at the table eating your dinner, what are you doing at the moment? I want to play on my computer game. Yes, I know. And when you have your bedtime story, what have you been doing the last few days? Grandad says you haven't had a bedtime story. I've been wanting to play on the computer game. In fact, Grandad's very sad because even yesterday, he said we were going to all go to the park and have a wander around the park and play on the swings. What did you choose to do? Stay at home, with, stay at home with Holly and I was playing on my computer game. Exactly. He's a little bit sad. I don't understand. Why? Well, let me go back. Do you know the story that you've just heard with Holly? Yeah, Mary and Martha. Yeah, Mary and Martha. Martha was very busy, as we know, tidying up, getting ready, when Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Yes, I know! In the same way, Grandad's a bit sad because I'm not sitting at his feet. No, not because you're not sitting at his feet, but you're not stopping and spending time with him. You've been so busy with your computer game, you've not wanted to spend time with him. You've not wanted to talk to him. You've not wanted to have food with him. You've not wanted to do anything. In fact, he just wants to have a hug and know that you still love him. I do love him. I just, I just love my computer game too. Yeah, I know you love your computer game too. But we need to make sure when we know that we love someone, we can stop, we can be still and just spend some time with them. Okay. In the same way, do you know that God wants us to do that as well? You what? We, we can spend time with God. We can stop, get rid of the distractions and just spend some time with God. I don't understand. Well, do you know what? I know Helen. Oh yeah, Helen has done a fantastic little craft to help us think through how we can spend time with God. What do you mean? Well, should we go and watch what she's doing? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go and watch it. Hi, yes, thank you, Jack. You're right, because today we do have an activity for you to do. I wonder if you've got any beads at home. Uh, they're little beads like this. You might have some coloured ones. Now, be really careful with these beads because they are very small and you might need an adult to help you. So just be careful with those. But what we're going to do today is we're going to make a little bracelet or you could make a little necklace. Um, and you have got to get some of these little letters like this. If you haven't got any at home, you can get one of these packs. Um, that you will find um, in the olive branch at church. So if you want to pop in and get one of these, you can pick one up there. And what we're thinking about today is the story where we need to be still and spend some time with God, just so we can be friends with him and be together with him. So we're going to get a little letter. Well, this is a sound S, and that's going to make the start of S for the word still. And the sub for us means that we're going to stop to all that business with our computers and our running around or whatever it is we're doing. To spend some time with God, we're just going to stop. The next one is a T, so put your T, thread it on to your beads. And our T is time to think, so it's time to stop. But just think about God, think about our day maybe, think about the time that we've had during the day. If you go for our next one, that's going to be an I to go on your still. We've got capital letters here, so we've got an I going on there. And with your still, your it is time to invite God to be with you. So we're going to stop what we're doing, we're going to think about God, and we're going to invite him to be our friend and spend time with us. Just like you might invite a friend around to spend time with them if you were to watch TV or have a party. The next one that we have here is a first L. We've got a capital letter here, so we've got an L. And that means that we're going to sit quietly and we're going to listen. Because when Jesus was talking, he was teaching about God and teaching what it's like to be with God. And so with our L, we're going to have a little time listening to God and the things that he wants to tell us. And our last L is love. Because I think Jack was saying earlier that with Grandad, Grandad was feeling a little bit left out because he didn't feel like Jack loved him very much because he wasn't spending very much time with him. So your next L on your bracelet is going to be for the letter L or love. So your word still is going to help you to think about stopping and spending some time with God and making sure that you're there with him. I think Andy and the family now are going to sing a song with you and show you how you could use your bracelet when it's finished. Okay, have a lovely day and remember, be still.
Bye. Hello, boys and girls. We're just having a time to be still and use our Be Still Band to help us focus on God. So maybe if you've got your band, this would be a great time to hold it like uh, Lily is here. And you've got your little band. Yeah. And we can go through each letter yeah. and think about how we can meet with God. So we can stop, as we know. We can think about what God uh, wants to say to us. We can invite him to speak to us. And then we can listen. And in this song, it's a great time to just listen to what God might want to say to us. And then we can remember that as we love God, he also loves us. Shall we? Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Shall we sing to him? Okay. I'm standing before the King. I'm standing before the King. I'm standing before my Father in heaven. I'm standing before the King. Singing, Father, I love you. Singing, Father, I love you. Singing, Father. I love you, I love you. So maybe just invite God to speak to you right now as we sing it one last time. And as you invite God, just remember to listen to what he might want to say to you. And when we're still in your presence, you can speak to us and we can listen and be close to you. Help us now as we move from this place to not move away from you, that we can just curl up on your lap and listen to how much you say that you love us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, have a fantastic week. And remember, at any time this week, grab your little Be Still band. And just remember, you can take any time to spend with God and be still and work through that, um, that simple word to help us listen to what God wants to say to us. Have a fantastic week and we look forward to speaking to you soon. God bless. Bye. bye. Should we say bye-bye? Bye. -bye? bye. bye. <laughs>Don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true 
and honourable and right, and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Well, hello again and welcome to the next instalment of Phil Shed Talks. So, again, I'm, I'm here in my shed uh, and this is, uh, if you've missed any of these in the past, don't worry, you can go back and have uh, a, a watch uh, at your leisure if you go back to our back catalogue. Uh, we as a church at the moment are kind of studying this concept of like, how do we grow spiritually as believers? Like, if in today's climate, church isn't possible for us to be able to do in the way that we've been able to do over the centuries. And if we're in a current different climate, how are we going to maintain our spiritual walk with God? How are we going to grow as individuals in our relationship with God? And also how are we gonna to grow together as a body that is a gathering of, of believers together how are we going to be able to do all of this? And so one of the things that we've decided to do is to take a step back and actually just go, all right, let's, let's talk for a little while about some of the practices, some of the things that we can do, some of the disciplines that we can do that will actually help us in our walk with God. Now, again, uh, one of the things that you'll find that I've said a fair few times and I'm going to reiterate right now is, I don't know about you, but my life is ridiculously busy uh, and I think all of us are at that point. So as I'm talking about giving you a whole series of disciplines, the natural reaction is already you're switching off and the legitimacy beside that is you're saying, well, hold on a second, I'm already swamped. The idea of taking on more feels like this is not going to help me, this is going to hinder me. And you know what? You're absolutely right. So instead, what we're trying to do is to work out what we can take out in order to be able to engage more with ourselves, with the environment around us, with those around us, and more importantly, with God. So, over the past four weeks, we've spent uh, a bit of time kind of exploring and looking at this idea of pulling yourself away from the craziness, from the busyness, and just having some downtime. This discipline, this act that we're doing, is called solitude. Now, you see, for some people, Solitude is ridiculously scary. In fact, I avoided using the word for the first few weeks because I didn't want to scare people. Because for me, I'm an extrovert. I'm probably one of the most extroverted people I know. And if you know me, you'd probably agree with that. And the idea of being alone on my own, for me, over the years, is something that I would avoid at all costs. See, I would probably say that I get most of my energy from interactions with others. And that for me, like that's my buzz. So the idea of actually stopping and taking time out on my own has been over the years, something I've avoided because actually it would often sap me of energy. But then I've realized that actually there is still a need for me to be able to do this. So we're in my shed, if you've missed the reasoning behind this. I love woodwork, love to carve with my hands, with, uh, with knives. For me, that's a, a, a real downtime for me. And this is something I've kind of started to do really over the last two years. And this is something that I've found to be a real source of life. For me to pull myself away and to get lost in the project, I found to be an incredible moment where I'm actually able to still all of those crazy thoughts and those voices and to be able to calm my mind down and bring myself into a solitary act. That for me, pulling myself away, has actually become an incredible source of life. And so for me, my shed has become um, a, a place where I seek solitude. And it's in these moments that I've found an incredible closeness 
with God. And so for me, I want to encourage, and this is what we've been looking at over the past few weeks, the idea of actually being able to do this, to find space, to find time, and just to say, okay, so I'm going to carve out some stuff in order to be able to allow me to be able to enjoy more downtime. And for most of us, we go, ah, honestly, there isn't a free moment in my diary. So for the last two weeks, we spend a bit of time looking at the stuff that clutters our lives and therefore our minds. Uh, and then we talked only two weeks ago about just the power that the phone has over us. For those of you using smartphones, you don't need to be told that you handle that thing far too much. We looked at that incredible figure, what was it, 2,217 times a day the average person touches their phone. I mean, that is a crazy figure. And we kind of just suggested, hold on a second, what would it look like if I in engaged with God that amount during my day in the same way that I do with my phone. I check to see what time it is. I check to see if I've got any messages. I check to see this. I check to message such and such to blah, blah, blah. And it's all done through this one device. And that doesn't even go into just looking at and choosing to spend time getting lost in apps like Facebook, like Instagram, like Pinterest and the list goes on and on. And some of you are there going, well, I don't have a smartphone, so we're okay on that front. But most of us have a television. But in fact, I'd probably argue if you're watching this, you have a TV. And we looked at the amount of hours that the average person watches television. The average person watches television for 35 hours a week. A week, 35 hours. So, this is not me pointing a finger and saying, you know, listen, if you can spend that much time doing this, then you should be spending more time with God. I'm just saying that actually, if I sit back and go, how much hours am I giving to my Xbox or to the last thing that I'm watching on Disney Plus or in Netflix? And maybe instead of actually doing all of that, I'm gonna say, I mean, don't get me wrong, everything in moderation, but actually saying, okay, so I'm gonna, choose to have a little bit less of that in order to have a bit more of God. And that's what we're talking about here. So this isn't about us putting more into an already exhausted, torn at the seams diary. No, this is about us choosing to say, hold on, let's take hold, let's prioritize. Let's take a look at my diary. How do I create space within it? How do I give myself a margin so that I've got a little bit less hurry and a little bit less rush? So we've been talking about two different books. The first one is Celebrating Discipline by Richard Foster. An absolutely incredible book. This book was written 40 years ago. We're using that amongst other stuff. It's kind of a bit of a skeleton for our sermon series at the moment. I really recommend it. If you're a reader and you want to be able to get into a book, seriously recommend it. The other is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. This book has been an absolute transformational power in our household even over the recent weeks. And that's by John Mark Connor. So The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Cannot recommend that book enough. Okay, so there's your quick catch up. Where are we today? Well, we're taking a look at actually what do we do in these moments of solitude. Now, this is not to say we carve out time and then fill it with something else. Solitude is a discipline of its own. And there is something wonderful about going for a walk, uh, for choosing to carve time out and be alone, don't be scared of being with yourself, and to choose to say, Lord, inhabit this moment whether that's walking your dog through the countryside, whether that's sitting in your shed, whether that's doing a piece of artwork, whether that's just saying I'm having a quiet time in the morning. Do you remember those quiet times in the morning? I mean, <clears throat> the very concept of it was something that was talked about loads in the 90s, but then it became such a, a ritual that actually people began to talk about it less. And so 
the idea of having a quiet time in the morning, like actually getting up half an hour earlier than I have to, it's because we burn the candle too late at night. Maybe I should go to bed a little bit earlier. Choose to spend some time with God, my Bible, a nice cup of coffee, start my day well. Okay, well, we're going to be looking a little bit of actually what we do in these moments of solitude. So I think solitude is a really great place to start. Okay, today we're looking at, and we're going to be looking at this over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at, now don't let the word scare you, we're going to be looking at meditation. And straight away, you say the word meditation to a child, and the first thing that happens is uh, the child will cross their legs, put their hands together, and probably hum, hum. That's not what we're talking about. In fact, Eastern meditation uh, is, I think, to a point, it's actually really good, as in what the principle is and what it's about. But the spiritual areas to which it goes, I think is wrong. So I'm not saying that we should take up yoga or begin to meditate within the Eastern usages of that word. But our Bibles are round full of the word meditation and to meditate upon the word of God. So this is a word that is used over and over and over again through our scriptures. Heck, if you open your first Psalm and you go to verse two, it talks about the blessed man and how he meditates upon the word of the Lord day and night. I mean, like, so the concept of meditation isn't wrong. I think perhaps as Christians, we've maybe thrown the baby out with the bathwater. You see, I think meditation and in today's twist on it, mindfulness, I think are fantastic. I mean, the idea of slowing your breathing down, slowing your body down and beginning to uh, engage with the inner self, I think is great. The whole concept of detaching myself from the things around me, I think is great to a point. It's like going halfway and then kind of skipping. It's like, I feel it's almost like going out to a restaurant, getting all dressed up and all excited about going out to the restaurant and getting to the front door and then turning around and going home again. It's like it's missing the crucial part, which is the meal itself. As we pull ourselves away and we slow our body down, slow our thought process down, begin to detach ourselves away from the stuff, the hurry, the rush, the chaos. And in this moment, we begin to say, I create space here. And the effects of it across my body is huge. And then I say, now God, meet me here. Breathe into me here. That is true meditation. Now, you can use all manner of things to assist you in this. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at actually exploring some of those. But it is a common, common, common acknowledgement that healing in the body starts in the mind. Meaning that negative thought process has negative effects on the body. And so if we can acknowledge that, I mean, you think about resentment, bitterness, jealousy, anger. As soon as we begin to even think about those thoughts, our bodies begin to react in different manners. You think about the way that depression affects the body. I hold my hands up, I know what that does. And equally, I know what my body does if I begin to work out and become more active, it has an effect on my mind as well. They're completely interlinked. Is there any wonder that when I'm ridiculously stressed, I feel it in my shoulders, that I feel anxiety in my stomach? See how linked they are. So what we have to be able to do is to say that there is clearly something going on in the mind and the body. And so as we engage with God, we should also expect to begin to see if we do this properly and actually take time and examine our hearts and allow God to change our thoughts, which is our verse from today, then we should expect to see 
God working wonders in our lives. You want to experience life here and now? I would say some of this begins with this idea of meditating on God. So, there are, believe me, there are so many people out there with, you know, 10 steps to this, 100 steps to that, you know, uh, and, and I'm actually going to talk about one of them today just as a, as a, as a way to, I suppose, kind of just help you in this at home. Now, I'm really aware that all of us are different. We're different character types. The way that our brains work are very different. Uh, my wife, Nikki, often laughs at me for the way that my brain is like constantly spinning so many subjects, so many conversations, all at the same time. And, and that when I'm talking, there's all of these multiple different linear lines that are all going off. And, and I enjoy preaching because I do just that. And then I'm trying to like gather them all back together again so it don't feel random and it all comes back in together. And then that's even how my conversation works. Now that's great. But it, if I'm honest, I'm constantly battling with all manner of stuff. For me personally, I find that, and I've talked about that I, I, I do struggle with depression and have struggled with depression for pretty much most of my adult life. And this is how it manifests itself. So for me, okay, so I'm aware that we're all different and you might be sitting there going, wow, Phil, like that must be really bad because you can't even imagine what it's like. Others are going, oh, wow, I'm not alone. Okay, so both of those are fine. For me, I find, that I'm constantly uh, finding myself when I'm, I'm not thinking about uh, anything in particular is I'll do two things. We talked about this last week. Do you remember as we were talking about the idea that, that Moses was invited to go up the mountain and to be on the mountain. That means to not be thinking about how you're going to get down or even to think about the journey that brought you here because actually that's quite human nature. And I find myself naturally reflecting upon my past. Like, for those of you that know, you know, I'm, I'm divorced. Nick is, is, is my, my, uh, my second wife. And there's parts of me that looks and goes, you know, I, I'm a great dad. I think I'm a great dad. My kids tell me I'm a great dad. But when it comes towards Christmas time, like, I really struggle. I mean, I've got a wonderful wife and we are the best of friends and I love Christmas and I love spending time with her but I am constantly afflicted by these thoughts of failure as you know, my kids deserve to have their dad around at Christmas time. That if I'm honest, as I begin to look at that and I feel like I failed them as a dad, and don't get me wrong, I know that God's redeemed me and where I am right now is great, but that doesn't stop those thoughts from happening. And it doesn't take long for me to begin to just reflect on, well, I wonder if I'd have done this differently or that differently. Or I have a habit of reliving those conversations. Anyone else do that? Where you find yourself kind of going back over that conversation that you had earlier on in the day that didn't go the way that you wanted to. And you find yourself reliving it and this time saying the things that you wished that you'd had the confidence, the guts, the wit, whatever. I also find myself working in the other direction. It's not just how I got up the mountain. I often find myself thinking about how I'm going to get down, like all the 20 tasks that I have for the day. I wake up in the morning and straight away I've got a list of as long as my arm of people that I need to message, people that I need to do, tasks I've got to do, people I'm going to be seeing that day, funerals that are coming up at the same time as that pastoral issue that's still kind of going on at the moment that, that needs dealing with and that I need to be able to talk to such and such about. And all of these different things are all going on and I'm trying to work out how I'm going to get through. So for me, I end up, my mind is absolutely cluttered all the time. And most of it's productive. I would have always said that my reflecting upon my past is actually trying to make sure that I don't make those mistakes again. But sometimes it's just me mithering on the past. Sometimes I would say that actually all these great thoughts of the things that I need to do today are wonderful because they mean that I'm actively involved in my day ahead. But also, I'm also aware 
that they're just all these things going on and they're a clutter and they're going to get done anyways but me thinking and worrying about them isn't going to make them get done any easier or better in fact i'm so often so preoccupied in the tasks that are ahead of me that i'm not giving full attention to the task i'm on now so for me i find the act of and we're going to be looking at some of these today this uh, concept of mindfulness of like choosing to slow my mind down to be able to be present in the day and that's what we were looking at last week this idea of being present because i if i'm honest so that's always something i've struggled with so we're going to look at a few bits and pieces that might help in that process through the idea of Christian mindfulness, Christian meditation, meditating upon, thinking upon, bringing God into this space that I've created through solitude. Alrighty, so a guy called Dr. Uh, Charles Stone has got this idea called holy noticing. Essentially, it's Christian jargon for uh, meditating in the moment or mindfulness here in the moment actually being fully present in the moment Uh, and so he has the word breathe and he takes the word breathe and associates each letter with something else so grab a pen Uh, I'm going to throw you a few of these out and in this up and coming week I want you to try and work your way through the list almost associate each day with something else okay so let's start with this so the first one is breathe it begins with the letter b so the idea is the body i actually find this one really quite useful he talks about um the way that actually we hold on to like negative stress or the negative effects of stress like i said for me i know that i hold a lot of my stress in my shoulders I know that if I'm honest, uh, I can point to the exact points on my shoulders where I hold all of that tension. And that if I'm not careful, I allow my shoulders to slump. I allow my posture to be affected and so on and so forth. So the way to do this, and he recommends this, imagine that your body is going through a body scanner. Well, you start off and you imagine that the scanner works its way up your left leg, up and over, around your body and then back down again. And what he does is he says, imagine just taking the time. And to, as you work with your feet upwards, is to relax. Relax the muscles in your body as you work your way up. Pay attention, notice if there's any tension in any of the areas when you get to your stomach. Is it cramped? Are you aware that there's knots in your stomach? Uh, Is this because of worry? If it is, just begin to choose in that moment just to work your way through and to relax. He says there's two benefits to this. The first one is as you work your way through it is, is it literally begins to relax your body, which is needed. And the second is through thankfulness, Lord, my body is fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord, I thank you that I'm here. I thank you that I have arms and legs. I'm aware of people around the world who do not have full access to their bodies. And for those of us that have got issues in our bodies as we get to it, there's still things and areas that we can be thankful for even in the midst of the pain that we're in due to that. If you've got, for example, uh, a bad knee, and you've always had a bad knee, there's still thankfulness that you've got your knee, that you've got two knees that you know you can work your way through. And this idea of actually just being thankful and at the same time, it's just being able to stretch out those muscles. Now you're kind of thinking to yourself, Phil, what on earth does this have to do with God? This is the act of choosing in this moment to relax yourself and to allow the stress, physical stress, to be alleviated. Next one is the idea of relationships. So this is letter R. Take a moment 
to work through and think about almost in like circles, those who are immediately close to you, working your way out to those who you are um, outer family, those that are close friends, work your way through and just take a moment just to go through each of those people who are in your life and ask yourself, how is my relationship with that person? To pray for that person as you think of them. There'll be some people in your life that if you're honest, actually, when you think of them, the instant reaction isn't necessarily nice. The person might not be great to you. The person may have hurt you. That person may be really difficult. Maybe a work colleague, maybe somebody within your own household. And so at this point where you meet uh, the person, mentally speaking, where you meet that person and there's a negative emotion that's attached to that, take a moment just to think, how would God react in that moment? How should the best version of me react when I next see that person? Pray a blessing over that person. It might go completely against you. Maybe this person's done or said things that has really hurt and injured you. But it's to take a moment and actually just say, Lord, as you've forgiven me, I'm choosing to forgive that person and to allow that to for God to work that in and through you. Because as we begin to forgive, and there is power in forgiveness, as we begin to forgive that person, so the power that that person has over us is given away. Because I'm no longer holding on to the resentment and hurt and the bitterness and the anger and the anxiety and the worry. And instead, I'm saying, Lord, I forgive. I give all of that to you. So R stands for relationship. And this is really worthwhile working through. The next one, this is a game changer if your brain works anything like mine. It's the environment. Now I found that in my quiet times, if I start off my day and I literally get straight up and I'm out of the door and I'm into the hurry, then I am rushed from A to Z throughout the whole day, climb back into bed, and I'm shattered, but I cannot sleep, because my mind is still wired. Anyone else like that? So for me, if I start my day, and this idea of the environment is to actually, as I'm sitting here in the midst, I allow myself to feel what's going on. So the other day I went for a walk with Jeremy and we went for a walk and we talked and we prayed and we just put our, the world to rights, talked about our church, prayed, it was great. And on the way back, on the way home, I just was suddenly aware of the rustling of the wind, the leaves, the smell, the autumnal colors. And in that moment, all the craziness is gone because I'm beginning to fixate on that that's around me and just allowing myself to enjoy it. In the morning when I wake up, I have my cup of coffee and I sit, I open my Bible, I read a couple of uh, Psalms, I read, I'm working my way through Hosea at the moment. And then I put it down and I just still myself. I allow myself to breathe the noises that's going on in the house, the ticking of the clock, the smell of my coffee. And I choose to take an object and just physically focus on that object, to not allow my brain to begin to wander onto the jobs for the day or to wander back into my past and try and fix the stuff that's broken, which I can't do but yet my brain wants to go there. And as soon as I begin to notice that my mind is beginning to wander, I snap it back to the object that I'm looking at. And within 30 seconds, everything becomes so much more clear. And in that moment, I invite God to meet me. And I tell you what, as I ask the Holy Spirit to fill me afresh in that moment, I notice that I find myself coming back to those throughout the day like my walk with Malachi on my way back from seeing Jeremy. In the moment, suddenly I'm there. Can't tell you 
the game changer this is for me. And as soon as during the daytime I find myself, which I do, going backwards or going forwards, my mind's here, there and everywhere. I say, no, I'm gonna be in this moment. And through by physically, mentally saying no and fixing on something that's going on around me, I'm in the moment and instead of lost in my mind. That game changer for me. A stands for acknowledge. This is acknowledge how you feel. Do you know what, like as particularly as men, we're, we're not really great at this. As Brits, we're shocking at actually admitting that there's something wrong, allowing emotion to show. But as we actually acknowledge how we are feeling, acknowledge the pain that we're carrying, acknowledge the hurt that we're feeling, as we begin to acknowledge those things, they cease to have power over us because we bring them to the Lord. And that is what this is about. That's not to go, siphling through the uh, the depths of the inner soul but there is something in just going you know what i'm just going to bring this before the lord i know that when i hit some of my low moments it is really helpful for me to go oh yeah that's what's going on today sometimes nick just asks me she says phil are you having a low day and i'm like yes i am and actually just by acknowledging it, I'm like, okay, so there's not anything wrong with me. There's nothing necessarily wrong around the situation of life at the moment, actually chemically, whatever it is. I'm having a low day. Acknowledge. T stands for thoughts. And it's this idea of taking captive of your thoughts. And the verse that we looked at today was, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. And as much as God begins that, works that miracle in us, puts the Holy Spirit in us to help that, there's also, we've got to take charge over it ourselves as well. And so, like I said, for me, I notice that when I'm beginning to think, I take captive of my thoughts. For me, I use that concept of, again, going back to the environment, finding something within that environment to be able to grab hold of. But each of us are different. And so the things that go on in your life will be different to the things that go on in mine. So when you notice negative thought patterns, is to go, no, I'm not going that route. And instead, I'm coming back to God. So it's about taking thoughts captive. And that could be just having a well overactive imagination and finding yourself thinking about stuff that's not helpful to you. Grab hold of it. The last one is H. And that's heart. How am I with God? We're gonna be launching small groups again very shortly. One of the things that we're going to be purposefully trying to do is just to be honest about what's going on with our relationship with God at the moment. Do you find it easy? How am I managing? God, what is going on in my life at the moment? Like when I, I do I feel close to God? And the idea of hate here, heart, this is wonderful because I'm saying, Lord, actually, do you take priority in my life? I need to guard my heart. I need to not allow it to be swept away by the worries of the world or the desires that I'm told I should have. The next beautiful car, that wonderful sofa that would look great in my lounge, whatever it is. Like if we're not careful, we can give our hearts to all sorts of things instead of God being number one something else, the next promotion, who my children grow up to be. The list goes on. Guard your hearts. Okay, there's your model. Breathe. Let's just quickly walk through them again. B stands for body. R stands for relationship. E stands for environment. A for acknowledge. T stands for thought. H stands for heart. And if you stick the E on at the end, breathe. Then that stands for engage. It's choosing to engage in these things throughout the week. Okay, so there's your challenge for this week. Uh, I hope you might find this useful. Maybe one of them will be 
incredible but the rest for me as i said i found and i'm desperately trying to keep in that moment this idea of being in the moment and doing it through saying actually no i stopped my mind from going there coming back and i guarantee you if you begin to work through some of these that you will begin to feel a physical effect to what's going on in your quiet moments with God. There we go. Okay, next couple of weeks, we're gonna be looking at different things to be able to do in meditation. Some of it's gonna be looking at Bible readings and how we approach scripture in our quiet times and actually how we allow ourselves to meditate upon, okay? So uh, we're gonna be working our way through this for the next couple of weeks. But my challenge to you this week is if you can do all of these in a day, awesome. If it's literally just one per day and working your way through it, then go for it. But I hope, my hope and prayer for you in this week is that in these moments where you choose to carve out time for God, that you are met by him and transformed by him. Let's take a moment. We do this at the end of all of our services is we're just gonna put our hands out and we're just gonna invite God into this moment. Maybe something that's been spoken about here has challenged you, grabbed your attention. Don't shelve it, don't let it go, but say, okay, God, let's work through this together. And as you start your quiet times, as you start your solitude, start like this. God, I'm here to meet you. Meet me here in this moment. Let's pray. Lord, each of us know that, yes, we may be doing an okay job with our actions, but that's so different to what goes on inside our minds. And Lord, we long to be transformed by you as this verse here says. So Lord, we ask you and invite you to transform our thought process, to transform our hearts, to transform our minds into the likeness of you. Lord, we long to meet you. And in this week, as we carve out time to do so, Lord, we ask, would you meet us and bring freedom from the stress, from the hurry, from the pain, from the anguish, from the fear, from the anxiety, from the depression. Lord, that you would allow your freedom to reign. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bring 
bring me sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born But Jesus is calling to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bold with the precious blood of Jesus Christ I've come to the altar the father's arms are Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing. Christ is risen Who oh, bow down before Him For He is Lord of all Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Oh, what a Savior Oh, what a Savior The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Bear your cross as you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found Heavenly Father, I just ask God that as we go into this week God, that you would go with us Lord, that as we attempt to draw close to you, Lord, that you would draw close to us. Teach us your ways. Teach us your heart. Teach us your thoughts, we ask, that we may further your kingdom through the power of your spirit. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We've come now to the end of our service this morning. Um, before we leave, I've just got a few announcements to make. Um, the first announcement is that our members meeting is on Wednesday the 28th. Um, we will be emailing, emailing out the Zoom link for this for those who are able to join. Those who aren't able to join um, the Zoom call, we will be giving DVDs to those people who would normally vote. Um, so that's Wednesday the 28th. Also, the last Sunday of October is going to be our harvest service for Birmingham City Mission. So if you have any donations, they would be very gratefully received at the coffee shop. 
So we hope you've enjoyed the service this morning. Uh, we do still have our Zoom coffee call after the service and that will start in around about 10 minutes time. Uh, whether you're a Forex Baptist member and you've been coming for years and years or you're brand new and this is the first time watching, uh, we would really love to speak to you and have a chat. So hopefully we'll see lots of people there. Um, and have a lovely week. Goodbye from Forex.